Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Calgary Barbell. Today we have a very, very interesting and informative discussion piece that we recorded with Dave Tate when we were in Columbus at Elite FCS. Now, the premise, the setup for it was things I've changed my mind on. And you might have seen us do some of those on the channel. Dave's answer wasn't necessarily a single thing he had changed his mind on, but it did lead to a really interesting and high-level discussion on what it is to learn as a powerlifting coach and openness to different ideas and a whole lot of, of sort of wide reaching philosophical and, and very interesting and I think enlightening discussion. So we hope you all enjoy and I'll toss it over there now. I can remember when the summer after high school, before going to college, I got a job as a fitness instructor, as a personal trainer before it was really a fitness instructor. Yep. And I felt like when I got that job and was applying for that job, I was the best person for the job ever because I knew all the leader principles. Mm -hmm. okay. you know, I knew all that. I knew linear periodization from the workouts of the month in Powerlifting USA and you know Arnold's Encyclopedia. So I actually remember at that time thinking to myself, there's nothing about this weight training that I don't know. Right. God, was I wrong. <laughs> but, you know, and so then, you know, going on through college and stuff like that, there were other points in time where I would hit, normally I would hit a sticking point and using more of a linear style approach, which kept running me into the same kind of brick wall. And professors really couldn't help me a whole lot. And I discovered the library, you know, and then the library I found, you know, the National Strength and Conditioning Journal, um, Soviet Sport Reviews, and things that spoke more about block periodization. And then I kind of realized at that time, linear is block periodization. There's like a hypertrophy phase, but these phases don't need to be as defined as what these are. Right. You know, th there, there's more to this. And, but before that though, I thought I knew everything about powerlifting mm -hmm. because I understood, you know, linear periodization and every mod everybody was kind of training like that at the time right like every model followed some kind of scheme like that some may not have had the hypertrophy phase but everybody had a strength and a peak phase right and some accessories some not but i knew all of it right i, I knew it all so the more i learned over a period of time the more i began to realize one major thing so there's 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 like a bell curve mm -hmm. where you know you start out you really don't know shit right and you know you don't know anything then you start learning some things you start working your way up this this coaching mountain or training mountain and each time you find some little new thing you know and usually it starts with like linear periodization or bodybuilding then it kind of moves into block then it might move into you know conjugate may actually fall underneath there now it depends where the pendulum with that is but usually all three of those kind of fall into there yep. and you can actually see this if you're watching people who are online as influencers so forth, you can see their narrative change mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where it goes from here it goes from here now they're using big words Right. You know, yep. Now they're using yep. the exact muscle. All the jargon. You know, yeah. Yep. It's not like the shit in the back of my shoulder. It's infraspinatus. Right. It's not cough. It, it, all this changes. And it's like I can plot like right where they fing are. And then the, the, the very top, when they get to that point, I'm not saying that's when you know everything, mm -hmm. but that's that top point is when they get to the point where they start to realize what I know doesn't matter. It does, but it doesn't. And the, or they also realize, man, I'm not making any fucking money. <laughs> like, <laughs> One I've of two put, things. I've, I've put okay. all this time yeah. into this and I'm not making any money. And it's also a position to where the content, the way they speak, the people they're speaking to, they're more concerned with how they appear to their peers mm -hmm. than how they actually appear to the people receiving the message. Right? So then they either leave you yep. know, and go into yep. another profession, or they start going down the backside, okay. right? When they start going down the backside, they start to realize all of this stuff did kind of matter, mm -hmm. but I need this, 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 but on this far end over here, they, they realize they don't know anything mm -hmm. about training anymore, but the most important thing is the results their clients are getting. Right. So that's the biggest thing that I learned was every time you learn something else, you move on that curve. Right. You can go from here to here. Right. So I've learned to like check myself. Okay. You know, yeah. like where, where is this and where is this here? And am I falling for bullshit or am I not falling for bullshit? 
and because what really matters is who's on the receiving end mm -hmm. and what they're taking from that. So now when you come up that curve, there were points in time to where, yes, I have bias. You know, there, were, there was a stretch of time where I thought conjugate was the answer to everything, mm -hmm. right? And it's, it, I may still believe that, but it's different because, and what helped change that bias a little bit was A, there became more styles of conjugate. Right, okay. Right, so now, like, what is that now? Like, what does it even mean? Right, so it's been diluted so much that I used to be able to say years ago, this is what it is, and most people would say, all right, this kind of follows this template. Right, And right. then there's an agreed upon base to start from, where now it's just like, what is it, bands? You I'm know, it's, idea, just, it's just, yeah, it's just, like. it's, just a, it's just a mess. So there was that time there where I thought, everything can be built off that base, mm -hmm. no matter what it is. And maybe it can, maybe it can't. So there's, there's a statement that kind of goes, meet the client or meet the athlete where they are. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I necessarily agree exactly with that. I think if it's a beginner, you got to meet them under where they are okay. because the beginner needs pushed up, right? So the beginner needs to have things diluted lower than the intelligence level that they have, not at their level, lower than their level. And then pushed and motivated up through all that. Sure. The advanced guy, need, you need to come in higher than what they are because most of the time they need push down. Like they need, right, okay. you need to back off, you need to back off, you need to yeah. back off. If you, and in either case, if it's the beginner or you're here, you have to work with that person to find the answer. More of a consulting type of thing. Mm -hmm. I didn't always believe that to be the case either. It was like, here's this, do this. If you do this, it's going to get better. Right. right. And then if it doesn't, then we'll just kind of work with whatever pops up as a sticking point where that can work. You know, if somebody's got a set plan and all that, that can work. But for myself personally, it's more worth taking the time. Let's lay everything out and let's figure out the 80% you know mm -hmm. or the 80% that we would agree on. Let's figure that out. Because more than likely, if I was to try to change that, you're not gonna have buy-in. Or it's gonna be too yeah. exhausting for me to create that buy-in mm -hmm. and influence to change that. Yeah. So let's find this 20%, usually this is with coaches. So let's find that 20% that's open. Mm -hmm. Like, what do you not know, yeah. right? And let's try to fill that. I may not know it, but I might know somebody that can help fill that. Let's fill that and then let's reaffirm all these other things. All right, right? Where that was a big change because before it was, here's the 80%. Right. And then the weak points will be the 20%. And then let's kind of move along that way. From the global standpoint, those are all more important than, you know, what I feel about a box squat mm -hmm. to where I could use that as an example where for a long period of time, it was only box squat, only box squat, pull it out, maybe a couple times before the meet and then go to the meet and it, it will be there. Like, right. It'll be there on the meet right. day, right? right. Yeah. Um, but then that, that gets a little exposed when the further out of your niche you become. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the things that I learned from Louie extended my career by a decade. There's a, there, again, that was one of those things where I mean, I thought I knew everything and then holy f now I'm exposed to this whole other world and all mm -hmm. these other people and all these other professions that are, this is, this is uh, vastly deep, you know, and that led, you know, to Mel Sif and all these other people I would right. speak to. It took me getting out and doing bigger seminars and seminars with people in different areas of the country to realize that not everybody trains one way, right? They all train different ways. There's basic ways that everybody kind of falls into and that when you get to the very top, nobody does the same thing. You know, they all learn how to bend, twist and mold whatever modality they're using to fit their needs, which is called auto-regulation. I've always said you can't be great until you learn how to auto-regulate. So then my mission became well, more of, you know, became more of how do you, how do you teach people and expedite that process? Right. Because you can, you need to do it to, to know this, right? It's very hard to say, now Mike T and some of the stuff that you guys have been doing, I think it's expediting the process a little bit because you're putting metrics to some of these things. Mm -hmm. Where before it's like, well, how do you feel? Is this working? Is it not? Like, I don't know what the f is there. Right. You know, you can't right. really figure that out. Um, but I saw so many lifters over a period of time 
they, boom, their total would just shoot up, you know, drug tested or not, just like out of nowhere. And I'm like, well, what the f did you do? And in a lot of cases, it was like, ah, I just can quit listening to my coach. I just, you know, <laughs> but, but the, the moral of it was, I just do what I know I need to do. Exactly. You know, if I need to back off, I back off. If I'm being a post, I push harder. You know, I just, I don't, I just, like, wham, boom, there you go. Mm -hmm. Then they find out later they still need somebody, you know, because the right. voice in your own head's not always not always the right, right voice. Yeah. They find that. So the box one, in a way, kind of would be one if you want to get into specifics and how is it going to be utilized and put in for competitive lifters. Mm -hmm. If it's not a competitive lifter, gen pop, stuff like that, same type of thing, but I probably lean more to keeping it in there because it is a sit to stand, mm -hmm. which is, you know, essentially life skills and swatting and stuff like that. So much of it is all coaching related because all the all the other nuts and bolts and variables and X's and O's, they I've always been aware of them all. I just wasn't as aware of how broad it is and how deep the education how deep the experience is at the higher levels. Mm -hmm. Let me put it that way. Okay. The general assumption is Okay, this is just a kanji guy, and everything that they're doing is just like from the book. Right. Or yeah. This is, you know, RPE type stuff. It's just from the book. This is Shiko. It's just from the book. It's not like that. Mm -hmm. It's not like that. So that was the most recent one. There you go. Lessons on individualization, meeting, you know, the client where they are, the collaborative effort between coach and client. A lot of, a lot of good stuff in there. Sweet. Well, thanks for, uh, thanks for yes. dropping some wisdom with us. And uh, make sure to check out the uh, the Elite FTS website, store, and the podcast that uh, I'll be on, Table mm -hmm. Talk. So, peace. We'll see you all in the next one.